What's going on guys? JD here from Perspective Captured and today we are taking a look at Final Cut 10.4's new color grading tools. I think you guys are really going to like them. If you haven't done the update already, definitely do it, but back up your system first. Let's get right into it. I do want to start by saying that there is a risk with upgrading to 10.4. Essentially, the library, like all of your libraries will have to be updated and you cannot go back to 10.3.4 once you've updated the libraries. So I recommend if you are in the middle of a project, back up your projects, maybe open them, remove proxies if you're using proxies, then back up your library somewhere, back up that XML file and keep that safe if you're going to update in the middle of your project. I want to start off by saying this is not a color grading tutorial. I repeat, this is not a color grading tutorial. Here we are in Final Cut 10.4 and I uploaded some D-Log footage out of the Mavic Pro. Um, let's, op let's go ahead and open up our color inspector to start off and we'll open up our color tools as well. Come on, there we go. So this is the original color board. You've got your color, saturation, and exposure. Master, lows, medium, highs, or you can control it down here by the percentages. Um, I hope you know how to work this already. I'm not gonna spend time here. So let's move on to the color wheels. Now, right here in our color correction, we can add color, color the color board, which, which is where we currently are. We can add color wheels, which is where we'll start. So let's start here with the long awaited color wheels. First, let's start with the view. You can view single wheel or all wheels. So in here, you can flip through which one you want to work on. You still have your, you have your temperature, tint, and hue here below, but you also have that if you go to all wheels. I prefer the all wheels, just so that way I don't have to click between each individual one at the top. If I want to just do a quick color correction, I'm going to boost this up quite a lot and then bring this back down quite a lot. And this is, I am in no means actually trying to do a color correction here. I am just boosting the picture to make it look better than it currently is. So let's add a little saturation. And there, the picture looks better. I'm not, all right, so here below you have temperature, tint, and hue. It, this I'm so happy they added temperature and tint. So if you want to warm up your picture a little bit, if you want to cool down your picture a little bit, it is a wonderful thing to have. Um, you know, tint is adding green or magenta. And then your hue is just to change the overall hue and tone of the image. So down here, you can see master shadows and midtones. And if I open it up, you can see that I've done some corrections up here. Um, this is the shadows. So you can see that I've adjusted the brightness down on the shadows and I can continue to do that right here if I don't want to touch the color wheels. Um, I'm also really happy that they didn't just have the two sides on it, but they added, they added the RGB um, adjustments. So if I want to push into the red, I can put, notice that the wheel goes into the red. Now, if I want to add a little bit of green to it, it'll bring it towards the green and we can reset that, that we don't need that. Now you can mix it back to the original image if you feel like yours is too strong, if you feel like your, uh, your color grade is too strong. And I like that, but that's for this overall entire thing. I wish there were separate sliders for, for the individual color wheels. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off and next I wanna go to the uh, color curves. Let's bring this up to there. right where you want it but when playing with curves you do lose saturation as you can notice the picture has gotten dramatically unsaturated from where it was so you will need to use maybe a color board or something like that in conjunction to increase saturation and probably more more than just that to get it up looking pretty good all right so let's turn these off and here, if you notice, when I was clicking under these, it tell, it shows you which ones have been turned off. Color wheel one 
is off, color board one is off, but color curves one here is on. So let's go to that, let's turn that one off. All right, and finally, oh, also with the color curves, you have your mix down here. So if you don't want it to be as strong, you've got that as well. I'm gonna turn, nope, not color, color wheel, color one, wheels one back on. And now we can go, we can go into it by clicking this, or we can go into it by click, double clicking one of the layers that we had put on. Now, finally, I wanna add the hue saturation curves. Um, this is where you can make slight changes. So if we wanna change the color of the bricks, I can add a point here, a point here, and then the point in the middle and make some adjustments to the, the bricks but I guess there's a little more orange in there. There we go. Now we can change the bricks. All right, so here, here we go. Here's hue versus, oh, here now that we're in the hue, ver, the hue and saturation curves, we can change the color of the water to whatever we want. Let's say I want to change the water all the way up. There you go. So we can change that maybe just a little bit, make it look a little bit more teal. You know, I don't know, something like that. Um, just having a little fun. This has nothing to do with color grading. Please be aware. Uh, and then with this point, we can super saturate it. The sky has also changed, so you may want to mask that out if you wanted to get just the ocean looking super teal like that. Um, hue versus luma, so we can now brighten up that ocean if we want to you know, oversaturated that, that won't allow me to continue on. Now you've got Luma versus saturation. So if I want to bring up or down certain, if we want to unsaturate certain luminosities, we can do that right here. And we can saturate versus just, this is just adding saturation to the midtones. So if I just want to saturate the midtones here, um, Ooh, all right, that looks terrible. Finally, we have the orange versus saturation where I can saturate a specific color. So let's go to aqua cyan. Let's let's saturate some cyan here. We're really gonna bring out that water. Now that looks crazy. Now, if you guys wanna see how I match clips, I am going to be putting out a few Final Cut Pro videos coming up and color grading videos in the uh, future on what I do to actually match clips and get them properly done as close as possible. This was just an overview of kind of some of the color correction tools and I hope you like it. I really hope you upgrade to 10.4. It is amazing. Um, I am I use pretty much all the different color grading tools for a certain purpose. I have Chromatic, I have Color Finale, and I have uh, Red Giants Colorista. So I use all three of them depending on what the needs are because each one offers something slightly different. I do happen to really like these new controls here in Final Cut Pro 4 and it brings together a lot of the things that each one had individually, but it's still missing a few features. So if you want to see a video on, if you want to see a video comparing all four Final Cut Pro, native Final Cut Pro, Pro 4, uh, Colorista, Color Finale, and... Um, and Cormac, Cormelt's, um, and Cormelt's chromatic. That was, that was bad. Okay, if you wanna see a combination of all of those, if you wanna see a comparison on what's missing from each one, uh, maybe a little bit on how they work, let me know down below. Please don't just hit that thumbs up, but also just mention, I wanna see a video. Uh, let me know. Enjoy Final Cut Pro 10.4. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Leave your life stories down below. Hit that subscribe button and join me on the journey. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes Try